Hey everybody, it's Derek with Millwright CNC. I'm here with the Power Route Max. This is our new machine. It's an upgraded version of the Power Route Plus XL that you might be familiar with. We're gonna do a little production with it today because as you can maybe tell in the background, our watershed's busy trying to get some other parts ready for Black Friday. So we've got something simple. These are gonna be the bottom pieces for the car team too. It's just an eight inch piece of aluminum. We had the water jet just blank out a one by one square. So we're gonna tackle with this and we really wanted to emphasize anyway how the Power Out Max can be used to take care of production in your shop. So some new things that we have coming on this machine. The 2.2 kilowatt APC spindle that you've seen on the Mega B2, that's now available on this. It comes with an automatic dust use that operates pneumatically. Whenever it does a tool change, it's gonna come up so as not to interfere with uh, that base where the tools are at. Obviously, I have the brushes off right now. We're gonna make a mess today so we can see the action. A lot of other enhancements to this machine, um, little minor things that add up, like we've got inductive switches on the X and Y, excuse me, on the X and Z. We've got mechanicals on the Y, self-squaring gantry for both the Masso and Gerbil machines. We added a lot of bracketry to this machine. It was already the most rigid machine in our line, but we're always trying to kind of push things and take it to the next step. When it's fully optioned, the machine weighs over 630 pounds. So you're looking at a shipping weight that can approach 700 pounds when we're shipping it out to you. But again, we can still ship to you residential with lift gate if we need to. And that would give you a machine that a shop like this one here that runs production tools could still rely on to take care of little bits of production when our big, really expensive machines are busy. So we've got a file set up. Again, the water jet cut a one by one piece. We're gonna cut 10 of these Car King 2 Z bottoms. Uh, I think we're gonna start with a tool change. Let's check out what the machine does. Let's give it a go. We zeroed out all the tools. It's gonna pick up our drill first. And it's gonna kick on our coolant mister. You can see that we're going to make a mess here. We don't have the bristles on the dust shoe, but we want you to be able to see the action. Little tip here, if you want to adjust the mixture here, you can do that. The little line here, that's got your coolant, and the bigger line here has got your air. You can adjust the mix ratio here. If you're starting out, uh, never run the machine before, it's been sitting a while, go ahead and turn that coolant on first and let it charge this line up because you're gonna to have to have a milk jug or some container of your own. And it's gonna take a little while when you first start it up to come all the way up this line. Now it's got a check valve in there to keep it from draining down, but you leave it uh, for a week or so and it's gonna drain down eventually. Let's zoom in and check out these holes here. It's making pretty nice. We're gonna drill these holes and then we're gonna come back in uh, with a 1 8 inch end mill, we're going to bore that out and then we're going to have an optional stop, or we do have an optional stop in the program that's going to allow us to install some wood screws that we're going to bite into this MDF with. Alright, so we're onto our 1 8 inch tool now. It's boring out those holes that came in first with a 4.2 millimeter drill and now it's got a 1 8 inch end mill in there. It's making a 5.5 millimeter and a 6 millimeter hole. The holes came out really well. They've been bored to the right size. So I've got that optional stop there. Got the spindle off. And I'm just going to install some wood screws into that MDF just to hold everything down as we contour. We have a blog post that we wrote a long time ago on work holding. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, if we were cutting these all the time, like if I was cutting hundreds of these, I probably wouldn't do this. But we're going to cut like, you know, 40 or 50. And this works for me. So I check and I make sure that I have clearance on the heads of my screws. I know where I want to put them already. And I'm going to finish that up. And when you see us again, we'll be contouring.
Alright guys, I told you that we were going to make a mess, and boom, here's the mess. If I had left the brushes on, it would have helped contain this some. But you see we have this uh, slurry. We made some really good chips here. We probably could have turned down the coolant just a little bit. But I mean, to give you an idea of what kind of chips we're making there, those are quality chips. Now, we have one more op that I had forgotten about, so I took this first piece out. But we have an op here that's going to come in and do rest machining right here on this little internal radius with the 1.8. I used a 3 8 end mill to cut it, which was really too big. You could have used the 1 8 to, to the entire thing and the job would have been done sooner. But uh, trying to put things through its paces, it's like, hey, let's uh, let's throw something big at it. Let's see how it does. So we're going to switch over to that 1 8 tool now and let it do the rest of the machine to get the small internal radius. pieces off here. Remember I pulled that first piece off not thinking about the fact that I had an optional stop in there. But there we go. Pretty pleased with that. I think it's got a nice surface finish to it. And we'll run these through the tumbler and we'll get them out the powder. Let's go. 